فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're now inshallah ta'ala going to move on to in the explanation of the kitab Thalathatul Usul written by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab we're now going to move on, inshallah ta'ala, onto the uh, fifth and the sixth and also the seventh type of min anwa' al-ibadah. So we've already done four previously, right? We did what? We did four. The first one being ad-du'a. And the second one was what? Al-khawfu. The third one was what? Al-raja'a. And the last one we took was a tawakkul, right? Inshallah ta'ala, today we're going to go into the fifth one, which is al-raghbah, and the sixth one, which is al-rahbah, and the seventh one, which is khushu'. So we'll take all of them, all together. All of them, we'll take them together. The reason why we're going to take them all together is because all of them have been mentioned in one ayah in the Qur'an. <coughs> The Sheikh says, وَالدَّلِيلُ الرَّغْبَةِ وَالرَّهْبَةِ وَالْخُشُوعِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The evidence for الرَّغْبَةِ and الرَّهْبَةِ and الْخُشُوعِ is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّهُمْ دَيْوَا كَانُوا the prophets because the context of the ayah is that before its prophets were mentioned so إِنَّهُمْ دَي the prophets that were mentioned كَانُوا دَيْوَا يُسَارِعُونَ Those who hasten to us أما they hastened في الخيرات in the good وَيَدْعُونَنَا And they supplicated to us and they called on to us رَغَبًا وَرَهَابًا So the first is one is رغبة They did it in a state of رغبة and in a state of رهبة and then Allah, said, Allah goes on to say وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ And they were those who had خُشُوعٍ so what does Raghba mean? And Imam Al-Raghib Al-Asbahani Rahimahullah in his book Al-Mufradat He says Aslu Al-Raghba Al-Si'atu Fi Al-Shay'i The word Al-Raghba means what? Al-Si'atu Fi Al-Shay'i Fa'idha qila Raghiba Fihi Wa Ilayhi Yaqtadi Al-Hirsu Alayhi Is when the person strives to something. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ila Allahi, Inna ila Rabbina raghibun. Inna we are ila Rabbina to our Lord raghibun. <coughs> also Allah says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ so the word ragba means is to strive to. Are you there? It is to strive to something. Ibn Athir also says the same in in his book An Nihaya, fi Gharib al Hadith, wal Athar. He says ragba yargabu ragba tan ida harisa. على الشيء وطمع فيه والرغبة السؤال والطلب. So he says is when the إذا حر إذا حرص if when the person strives to على الشيء أي ماتا وطمع فيه and he has desires for it. The word Al-Raghba and Al-Rahba they are from the Al-Fad which are said إذا اجتمعا افترقا وإذا افترقا اجتمعا if they come together they take different meanings 
And if they are separate, they take each other's meanings. Are you there? If they come together, Al-Raja means just wanting something. And al ragba means requesting something. So it becomes, the raja just becomes the first stage when the person desires something, wants something. Are you there? When he what? He wants something. But if that want becomes, are you there? If it becomes talab, requesting for it, this is now then called a ragba. This is what Ibn Qayyim mentions in his book, Madarij al-Salikin. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what he did was, وَلَقَدْ رَغَبَ اللَّهُ عِبَادَهُ فِي طَاعَتِهِ وَأَمَرَهُمْ بِهَا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he requested from his slaves to obey him. Rather, he commanded them it. Allah says to them, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ when you, complete, when you finish of praying and you finish worshipping Allah and you finish, Allah says, فَانْصَبْ Go and do another one. Are you there? You would expect that the verse would say to you what? Like relax, enjoy yourself. If you worshipped Allah and you finished what you were doing, you would think to yourself, it's saying what? Go and what? Enjoy yourself, right? But no. Allah is saying, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ And this shows you the believer hasn't got holidays. Are you there? But the problem is, is that we have a very restricted understanding of ibadah. We only think ibadah is fasting, praying. There are ibadat which fi asliha in its original essence are mubah. Mubahat. Things which are, you can do it if you wish to. You don't get rewarded for it, nor do you get a sin for it. But by coming with the correct intention, you could what? You can turn it into ibadah. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say to the companion? حَتَّى مَا تَجْعَلُوا فِي فَيِّ مرأتك. Even the, the spoon that you take and you place in the wi- your wife's mouth. The luqma, the food that you give your wife. <coughs> if you take a spoon, if, you pl- if a man jokes with his wife with the intention of play- placing happiness in the heart of a believer, or doing that by having the intention of implementing the verse بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Live with them in good You get rewarded for it What did the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام say? When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told the companions that the even intimacy you get rewarded for it So the companions were shocked, were shocked. So they said وَفِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةً يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ do we get rewarded for having intimate relationship with our family? Allah's going to reward us for having intimacy with my wife. I get edged for that. The reason why they asked that question is because they were thinking that anything <coughs> that has to do bringing pleasure around about, there's no, there's no reward for it. If it's already bringing pleasure, because they thought that the reward is connected to something that the Sharia wants you to do, but your nafs doesn't want it to do. And that's why we always say the relationship between your khalq, are you there? And the commands are, is that they are compatible to one another. So the sahabas, that's, what they, that's their nadar, that's what they were observing. Meaning, oh, Messenger of Allah, regardless of whether rewards connected to it, the people already like this, they're going to do this because this is desires. Sah, shahwat is connected to it. But look what the Prophet said. This then again shows us the religion is a religion of justice, adil. What did the Prophet say? That if what about if a person was to go and to fulfill their desires in haram, would they have a wizard? Would there a sin come from it? The Sahabas said yes. So this Prophet said the same. 
if they were to do it in a halal, they get rewarded for it. So it shows you that the religion is just. It's adl. So if a person looks at فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ That everything around you is a reward. Well, the things that shaitan will do to you is a thing you can get a reward for. For example, a brother provides for his wife, which he should do when he's married to his wife. He gives her risk, he gives her money. Shaitan, just so you don't get rewarded, he won't bring you to your heart and your mind to correct your intention and do this to get closer to Allah. He won't let you do that. If you do it, Lillah, for the sake of Allah, because Allah commanded you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you give a person money, or you smile in the face of a Muslim, are you there? If you look at all of that as a means of ibadah, you're getting closer to Allah, then that's what it means, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ That just always observe that every single thing around you is a form of ibadah. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And in your Lord have رَغْبَ Which is what? Request from Him, ask from Him, desire Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the believer, the believer, every single thing, the center for it is what? His deen. صحيح? فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Every single thing. You're having a conversation with a person, guess what's going to happen? One way or another, Allah is going to come into that conversation for you. Because for you is وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Your desires is about Allah. That's the center point for you. Are you there? You know somebody, for example, who, who, him and his wife, they go separate ways, he divorces his wife. Every time the story is about her, right? Every time it's he has desires for her. He will somehow find a way. You wouldn't know how this happened, but the whole storyline will come back to this girl that he loves. Sahih? You guys have seen it, right? But if a person is in love of Allah, he will do the same. Well, that's why there's a sin that a group of people who sit in a gathering and they don't remember Allah and they stand up. The narration mentions there is a sin they accumulate from it. The Prophet Sallallahu he said لم يج... ما جلس قوم مجالسا لم يذكر الله تعالى فيه There is not a group of people who sit in a gathering which they don't remember Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala إلا رأوا حسرة يوم القيامة Except they're going to see some they're going to regret it that day of judgment Another narration says except they take from that place a tira sins, shortcomings because وإلى ربك فرغب how could it have happened? If you had true iman, how could you have sat in a place for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, and not once or twice, the one that you love, that means the most to you, hasn't come up, and you haven't spoken about him, even to a kafir. It's a form of uh, benefit for you. So, because that's what it's all about for you. So this is what the author rahimahullah brought, which is Ragbah, having in Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Having a Ragba. Well the people are two types. The people are what? The first one is Raghib. And the second type is Rahib. A Raghib is a person who's what? Fima in Dallahi min thawabi wa na'im al muqim. It's a person who he desires, he wants, he strives to that which is with Allah wa Taala, the rewards, the bliss, the great things that are with Allah. He's just striving, he just has hope. And another person is a rahib. He's a khaif min adabillahi wa iqabi. He's scared <coughs> of the punishment of Allah wa Taala. Are you there? But the Qur'an combines between the two. The Qur'an wants you to combine between the two. At-tama'u wal-khawf. Al-raja' wal-khawf. Wal-raghba wal-rahba. As Allah said in Surah Sajda, Ayah 16, يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ 
they call unto their Lord, they supplicate to their Lord. Khawfan, and khawf means what? Raghba. Watama'an means, sorry, khawfan means rahba. Watama'an means raghba. Also in authentic hadith, in Bukhari and in Muslim, and Imam al-Bukhari brings in Kitab al-Wudu, and Imam Muslim, he brings in Kitab al-Dhikr. That the Prophet ﷺ's dua was what? Raghbatan wa rahbatan ilayk. Right? Raghbatan wa rahbatan ilayk. Ma ma'ana raghbatan? Ay tama'an fi thawabik. Wa rahbatan means wa khawfan min iqabik. Hoping for the reward that you, that's with you. And scared of your punishment. So my beloved brothers and sisters, desire... Irghab fi ma Allah. Have hope and desire was with Allah Tabarak wa Taala. Because you know why? Why is it that we should desire was with Allah for two reasons? Because what is with Allah first of all is khayrun is better than anything that you have in this world. The second reason is wa abqa. Whatever is with Allah is going to remain forever. What you already have is nothing equivalent, nor is it even close to what's with Allah. And for sure, it's not going to last forever. What did Allah say? بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى For those two reasons, Akhirah is better. Don't make your focus the dunya. Why is it that you're looking at the dunya so much when in reality what's in it is not as good as what's in the hereafter? Allah said, the Prophet said, what did he say in the hadith? Jannah is what? I've prepared for my believers. The believers here are, what, which one are they? The ibadah who are the ones who've accepted servitude. Yeah? Who accept that they are true slaves of Allah. I've prepared for my righteous slaves. What is it? I have prepared for my righteous slaves that which eyes have never seen, ears have never heard of, and has never come to the mind of a believer what this place is like. What did he say? The only thing that this, uh, the only thing that what's in the dunya and in, in the hera in Jannah. The only thing they share is the name. The only thing they share is name. Jannah has a river which is milk. Just the name. Just the name. Don't worry. Don't think it's the same. Can't be the same. Because it's Mala Ainu Rat. Wala Udun Samiat. Wala Khatara Ala Kalbi Bashar. It has honey in Jannah. Just the name. Not the same. There's Khamar in Jannah. Just the name. It's not the same. Does it make sense? So it is what? It is is what is that's deserving to, to want, right? And it is also wa it will remain forever. But that when the people enter Jannah, you with me? And they've seen their na'im and the khair that Allah wa ta'ala has given them. Are you there? What is it that Allah is going to get rid of? The angel of death. So what did the narration say? It will be said to the people in Jannah, Khuludun la mawt. People of Jannah, eternity. This is where you're going to be for the rest of your, I mean you can't even say the rest of your life. You can't even use that word. This is where you're going to be forever. Khulud la mawt. You're never going to die. Angel of death is just killed right in the middle of the people of Jannah and in the people of Hellfire. And then it's looked at the people of Hellfire and he said to them, Khulud la mawt. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, I think it was her. She said, Lawmata ahadun. If anyone was to die that day out of pain and agony, the people of Jahan, Jahannam will die out of pain and agony. Imagine knowing that you're going to stay there forever. 
And if anybody that day would die, would be, would die, I would be so excited, and then it would be the people of Jannah. Look at the, look what they're told. This is it. You're here forever. Never. No more halal, haram. You're a slave who is free to do what he wishes. Naimun muqim. Your blessing here is forever. So the believer's heart is there. It's always there. It's connected to there. He's just all right over there. He doesn't, he does he physically lives in this world. He physically lives in this world, but his heart is gone. Where is, where is it gone to? Fima indallahi, that which is with Allah. Because it is khayrun wa abqa. So the person has to be what? Have ragba. The second one is rahba. And rahba, as al ragib al asbahani who said in his al mufradat page 209 to 210 he said al rahba wa it is fear but what comes with that fear is idrab the person's heart shakes trembles <coughs> Are you with me? There's faza with it. And Allah says it in the Quran, Surah Al Hashr, La antum ashaddu rahbatan. In Surah Al Qasas, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Janaha, Janahaka min al rahbi. Janahaka min al rahbi. Rahba is a ibadah. It's amalun qalbiyun, just like all the other ones that we were taking. Like, and it's also la tambaghi illa lillah. It is not permissible for anybody other than Allah. Allah said in the Quran, wa iyaya farhabun. Don't have rahb, fear, except of me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah also says, wa qala Allahu la tattakhidu ila hain ithnain. إنما هو إله واحد فإياي فرحبون سورة قصص So the person has to be what? Scared The heart has, of the person has to tremble Consistent fear The beauty about the salihin, the righteous people Are you there? Is when the humans become scared of something It damage it psychologically damages them. And Malkhofu min Allah doesn't psychologically damage you. This is the minan ni'am from the blessings. If you're scared of something today and you you're fearing it, for instance, you've committed a crime, you're scared you might get caught, it leads to depression, anxieties, and whatnot, sah. Amma Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, what is it what is it? The fear of him, it doesn't have that. It doesn't lead to depression, anxieties and whatnot. You know why, brothers? Are you there? It's because if you feared him in the first place, who are you going to run to? To him. Because you know there's no one else to get anything from except him. So you fear him and you run away from him. But then you run to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, O oh slave, Be one who is scared, who seeks aid and help from Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, one who repents and asks for forgiveness. In a state of hope and fear. It is fear and hope. The path to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is fear and hope. The thing that gives you safety. Min al al akbar yawm al qiyamah. It gives you safety. The torment of the day of judgment. 
فمن خاف الله if you fear Allah في الدنيا in this world أمنه الله في الآخرة Allah is going to give you safety the day of judgment <coughs> نسأل الله أن يجعلنا من الآمنين يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم We ask Allah تبارك وتعالى that he makes us from those who he keeps safe the day where wealth won't benefit you, children won't benefit you, except if you come to Allah with a pure heart. A heart that is safe from al-shahawat, and a heart that is safe from al-shubuhat, protected from, from both of them. That day, that heart is what Allah loves. He wants to see that slave. Allah doesn't look at subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah won't look at a person's physical ability and their strength and their power and their structure and how tall they are and how big they are the prophet told us in a hadith the day of judgment he will come to uh, the day of judgment he will come a person who is chubby who is big who is fat he's gonna come and then he will be placed on the scale he will be placed on the scale فَلَا يَزِنُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضَةً And he doesn't wait to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the wing of a He doesn't wait a wing of a mosquito Why is it that he doesn't wait a wing of a mosquito? Yeah? It's because إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ Allah doesn't look at your body Allah doesn't look at your physique. What Allah looks at is what? وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَعَمَالِكُمْ Allah looks at your hearts and your actions. <coughs> Allah looks at those two, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you consistently feed your heart, with those which we have mentioned, al khawfu wal raja'u wal tawakkulu wal raghba wal rahba. If you fill your heart with those and the others that we're going to mention, you will come to the day of judgment bi qalbin saleem, a pure heart, a protected heart. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al quburi fazuruha. Another riwayah says, فَإِنَّهَا تُرَقِّ الْقَلْبِ It softens the heart. Are you there? And in the hadith, an Imam al-Tabarani brought in his Muslim al Shamiyain. Shaykh Nasir authenticates this hadith al sahiha That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that Allah إِنَّ لِلَّهِ آنِيَةِ Allah has vessels on this earth. وَآنِيَةُ اللَّهِ And the vessels of Allah on this earth is the hearts of every righteous slave of his. And the most beloved heart to him is what? Aliyanuha, the softest of it. The heart that is most beloved. What does he mean by Aliyanuha? Wa'araqiha. That's what the Riwaya says. Aliyanuha, wa'araqiha means a heart that is soft, like it is trem- it trembles. When it remembers Allah, it's in tears. Alladina yadkuruna Allah, alladina ila dukhira Allah, wajilat kulubuhum. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The Qur'an and the remembrance of Allah has a straight effect on their hearts, direct effect to their hearts. And the only way that that could happen is a person who, who nurtured their hearts by making sure they place fear in their heart. Hope. Al-Raghba. Al-Rahba. Al-Khushu' which we're going to take. Al-Khawf. Al-Raja. Al-Inaba, all of those. And the hadith mentions, as I said, by going and visiting the graves. Going to the grave and looking at where these people are lying. <coughs> are you there? And looking at their situation and observing it. It's one of the things, as the poet said, يُمَثِّلُ ذُ اللُّبِّ فِي لُبِّهِ مَصَائِبَ قَبْلَ أَن تَنزِلَ فَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً لَمْ تَرُعْهُ لِمَا كَانَ فِي, في, لما كان في نَفْسِهِ مَثَّلًا و... وَيَا يُمَثِّلُ ذُ اللُّبِّ فِي لُبِّهِ مَصَائِبَ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْزِلَ فَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً لَمْ تَرُعْهُ لِمَا كَانَ فِي نَفْسِهِ مَ
ويامن على كل حال I can't remember but what he says is that he compares his situation to the situation of those people who are in their grave why يمثل يمثل ذو اللب ذو في لبه قبل يمثل he compares his situation to their situation قبل أن تنزل before it comes down on him فإن نزلت if it happens to him that the real death comes this time لم تروعه it doesn't place fear in his heart لما كان في نفسه مثلا because before he already perpetrated he already and that is why what does that mean when they used to place a grave inside their own household and lie inside it they will take they will lie inside the grave and they'll sleep on the side and when the, so this is a preparation and they'll say inside the grave قال رب ارجعوني لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت and then they will take the dust of themselves and they will speak to themselves and they will say to themselves O oh slave ya Abdullah you have been given a choice you have what? You've been given a choice. Sorry, you've been given a chance. One more chance you got. What are you going to do? Behave yourself now. And they will go and they will work hard. So if the time came on the real death, لم تروحوا لما كان في نفسه مثلا. As for the one who's jahil, who doesn't remember that situation, doesn't think about it, when it does come to him, it's the first time. This one doesn't feel like it's the first time. He's done it so many times. He feels like I was ready for it. I was prepared. Fully equipped for it. So the believer is like that. The believer is one who always places fear if he feels that the hope is becoming too much. And if the hope is becoming, uh, the fear is becoming too much, then he places hope in himself. He places what? He hopes. You need to balance it out. Don't let one over the come the other. I've seen people, subhanAllah, who have become depressed. Completely, they've they've left the haqiqah. They've not understood the reality of khawf. That's not khawf. And then the khawf is something that becomes what? Khurub min Allah. To run from Allah and to run back to Allah. Ta'ala. And fear of Allah necessitates or initiates automatically khawf. They can't live without khawf. Does that make sense? Now we're going to go on to the next one, which is al khushur. Khushu' means at-tawadu' Humility, some scholars said Some scholars, they said, no, what it means is Al-khawfu da'imi fil qalbi la yufariquhu abadan It is fear that never leaves the heart But the original meaning of the word khushu, aslul khushu is sukun. Yeah? Sukun means what? Tranquility. That's what Allah says in the ayah in the Quran, Surah Al Taha, ayah 108, right? Allah says, Wa rahmani al aswat means what? It just becomes quiet and silent and calm. Ibn al Qayyim says, no, it's not just sukoon, but rather, in his book Madarij al he says, Wal khushu' fi asli al al inkhifad, wal dhul wal sukoon. All of those meanings. And he uses the argument of Surah of Surah Fusilat Ayah 39. He goes, What did Allah say? Wamin ayati and nakatar al arda khashiatan fa ida and zelna aliha al ma tezat warabat. He says, Look at it. What it means here is. عدم ارتفاعها بالري والنبات. الخفاض means that the earth doesn't it doesn't grow. It doesn't grow 
with the fruits, uh, sorry, the watering and the plants that are placed in it is, is not producing, it's not going out. So all of those meanings are what it holds. That's what he says. Ibn al-Qayyim. And what it means is that the person stands in front of Allah. Qiyamul <coughs> Abdi, it is the slave stands in front of Allah. Bil khudu'i wa dhulli. Humility. And submission. Wal inqiyad. Submission lil haqi to the truth. It has alamat that a person is khashi. He says khushu'. There are signs that a person has khushu'. Alamat, signs that can that, that show that they can realize if they have khushu' or not, right? What is it? And al abda ida khuli fa rudda alayhi al haq. If a person is opposed and he's brought back to the truth. Are you there? He's brought back to the truth. And he's shown how wrong he was and where he went wrong. He takes that on with acceptance. I like the definition of those who say that and al khushu'a that khushu' really stems from at ta'zim which is the production of al mahabba and dhulli right yeah wal inkisar sah inkisar is what it's also to humiliate yourself And the word khushu' has come in the Qur'an in four meanings. The first one is ad-dhullu. Are you there? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَخَشَعَتِ الْأَصْوَاتُ لِلْرَحْمَانِ Some scholars, they said ad-dhullu. The reason why the people's voices cannot be heard, the day of judgment, no one's going to respond. And everyone's silent is out of humiliation. The second one is sukunul jawarih, calmness of a person's body, their limbs. Allah says, "Alladina hum fi salatihim khashi'un." It's like when you're in the prayer, you're in the prayer, you're not moving around. Sukunul jawarih. The third one is al khawfu fiya. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ خَائِفِينَ Number four التواضع Humility سورة البقرة Allah says وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said in the dua in Sahih Muslim من حديث علي رضي الله تعالى عنه اللهم لك ركعت وبك آمنت ولك أسلمت خشع لك سمعي وبصري ومخي وعظمي وعصبي Humility means my ears have become humility uh, in a state of humility for you and my eyes, my brain, my bones, everything. And Allah Taala He says, "Wastainu bi sabri wa salah." Come with patience. Use patience and praying. وَإِنَّهَا and it is لَكَبِيرَةٌ it is big إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ 
خاشعين هي اوات الا على الخاضعين لطاعته دوس يو هو كم وذ هيوميليتي تو الله تبارك وتعالى كوماندز الخائفين ان يا سكيل اوف هيم المصدقين هو بيليف ان بوعده هيز بروميسز ووعيده ان هيز وورنينجز الإمام حسن البصري said on the commentary on the ayah of the ayah قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون he says he says كان خشوعهم في قلوبهم their خشوع was in their hearts that's the that's where it's originally in هاي ده فغضوا بذلك أبصارهم and because of that they lowered their gaze وخفضوا به الجناح and they humbled themselves meaning they lowered their wing and it's powerful because Hassan al-Basri combined between two things in other words they are Internally, they come with the rights of Allah wa Taala. Are you there? So in their hearts, there are what. But then it doesn't just stay there; it shows on their limbs. So that's one rights. The second one is that they are humble and soft. That's one thing you're never going to find with atheists. خفض الجناح أبدا Because the person who receives that is a person who has خشوح A person who has And this is a sifat لأهل الإيمان It's a person who believes in Allah No one else can have these characteristics ولذلك أحد السلف they said they said أحد السلف he said من دخل الخشوع قلبه anyone who خشوع enters his heart ظهر الوقار على جوارحه anyone who خشوع enters his heart the tranquility and the effect of the خشوع in the heart it will resonate on the limbs and you manifest on the person's limbs And what has what it has reached us is that the khushu' will be taken from this ummah until you find no one who has khushu'. And we live at that time right now, if you look at it. Little do you find. We're not saying that it doesn't exist, but it's little you find. People who have khushu'. حذيفة بن اليمان سيس ولا تنقضن عرى الإسلام عروة عروة ويكون أول نقضها الخشوع حتى لا ترى خاشعة that Islam will be taken bit by bit bit by bit it will be taken the first thing that will be taken is الخشوع حتى لا ترى خاشعا until you don't see anyone who has خشوع but remember when we said khushu, we now understand what it means, right? Ubadat ibn Samit said, as Imam Tirmidhi narrated in his sunan, Ad-Darimi, Ad-Darimi, he narrated in his musnad, in hadith Abi Darda, Abi Darda said, Ubadat ibn Samit said, that in shi'ta, if you guys want, la'uhadithannakum, if you guys want, I will tell you of 
بأول علم يرفع من الناس the first knowledge that will be lifted from this ummah علم knowledge al-khushu'ah and it is what? it's khushu'ah and, and he goes on to say yushiku an tadkhula it is close it's possible that you enter a masjid of a jama'ah فلا ترى فيه رجلا خاشعا and you find no man who has khushu' in him Al-Imam Abdul Rauf Al-Munawi in his book Faydu Al-Qadir <coughs> he says أول ما يرفع من الناس الخشوع the first thing that is taken from the people is khushu A, it means khushu al-Iman it means the khushu of Iman الذي هو روح العبادة which is the soul and the life of the عبادة So if that's the case, my beloved brothers and sisters, فَلْيَحْرِسِ abd The person should strive. التَّخَلُّقُ بِهَادَ الْخُلُقِ الْكَرِيمِ To come with these great characteristics. خُلُقُ أَهْلِ الصَّلَاحِ The characteristics of the righteous people. And Allah تبارك وتعالى has praised them. ثَنَاءً عَاطِرًا An amazing praise. فَقَالَ تَعَالَى Allah says, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ والمؤمنين والمؤمنات until he says والخاشعين والخاشعات until he says أعد الله لهم Allah has prepared for the ones who are خاشعين and those who are the male who are خاشعين and the women who are the خاشعات Allah has prepared for them what أعد الله لهم Allah has prepared for them مغفرة forgiveness وأجرا عظيما and great reward سورة الحزاب آية 35 Brothers and sisters, khushu' is alamatul falah. It's a sign of prosperity and success. As Allah says, qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Aflaha, success. Is the believer. Hu alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'un. That's the first characteristics Allah mentioned. They are the ones who what? Who have khushu' in their prayer. الإمام مسلم رحمه الله نريتني صحيح من حديث عثمان رضي الله تعالى عنه. he said سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I heard the prophet of Allah say ما من امرئ مسلم تحضره صلاة مكتوبة فيحسن وضوءها وخشوعها وركوعها إلا كانت كفارة لما قبلها من الذنوب ما لم يؤت كبيرة وذلك الدحر كله that there is not an individual, a Muslim individual, who the Salah comes, the Salah which is the obligatory prayer, فَيُحْسِنُ وُضُوءَهَا وَخُشُوعَهَا وَرُكُوعَهَا And that individual perfects his ablution, <laughs> and the khushu' and the ruku' إِلَّا كَانَتْ كَفَارَةً Except it becomes an expiation for them, لِمَا قَبْلَهَا That which is before it, مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ All the sins that you have done before, just by perfecting your wudu and your khushu and your ruku, it's an expiation for all your previous sins. Ma lam yu'ti kabiratan, as long as you don't come with a major sin. Wa dhalika al-dahra kullahu, and that is for the whole year. Ponder with me on this verse. Wa tadabbar hadhi al-ayat al-kareema, al-lati tad'u that calls to al-quloob, it calls the hearts to ila al-khushu li rabbiha. To have khushu of its Lord. Allah says in Surah Al-Hadid, Ayah 16, أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَّتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ What does the verse mean? أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ 
ما بعلى لم يعنيني hasn't it not come the time hasn't it not come the time for the believers for their hearts to become soft and that their hearts tremble in the remembrance of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala which is the Quran and that it submits to the commands of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and stays away from the prohibition of Allah and that the tr- and the truth which he has sent down on his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as sunnah Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Saudi he said about this ayah he said wa hadha fihi al-hath this verse is urging us ala al-ijtihad to strive ala khushu' al-qalb to come with the khushu' of the heart lillahi ta'ala for Allah wa lima anzalahu min al-kitab wal-hikmah and that which Allah has sent down from the book and the wisdom meaning the sunnah And Imam Muslim says, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, مَا كَانَ بَيْنَ إِسْلَامِنَا وَبَيْنَ أَنْ عَاتَبَنَا اللَّهُ بِهَذِي الْآيَةِ <coughs> Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, pay attention. There was not between the time we entered Islam and the time Allah scolded us and told us off. In this verse, Alam Yani Nil Dina Amanu and Taksha Akulubuhum Nidikri Lahi, Omanazala Minal Haki Wala Yakunu Kaladina Utul Kitaba Min Kabulu Fatala Arihimul Amadu Fakasat Kulubu Makathiru Minum Fasikul, Illa Arba Sirin except four years. Four years, Abdullah Ibn Sa'ud was from the Awail of the Sahabas, the early ones who came into Islam, right? He said it wasn't, we weren't Muslims for more than four years when Allah told us of Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. For our hearts to have khushu'ah. So you can see that this was something that was called, they were called into and they were commanded even in the Meccan period, Meccan time. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, فَنَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَرْزُقَنَا الْخُشُوعَ وَالتَّعْظِيمَ لِجَلَالِهِ We ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala that he provides us with khushu' and honoring him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa an yahdi qulubana and that Allah guides our hearts wa an yashrah sudurana kama na'udu as we ask Allah we seek refuge in him min khushu' in nifaq the khushu' of the hypocrites innahu waliyyu dhalika wal qadir alayh Allah is the one who is able to do that for us anything which i have said that was wrong a mistake a shortcoming it's from me as shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.